Hello and welcome back. Okay, so this video is about GPIO, that's General Purpose IO. Now I know some people are going to kind of raise an eyebrow at that because I've done far more complicated systems on the build already. But this is actually going to be the first video in a kind of mini series, which is going to bring the peripheral section of the CPU to completion. Now I'm going to start off by talking about why I would want GPIO. So let's have a look at some of the interfaces we've already done. Okay, so here's the core CPU and the UART. Now I've taken the VGA away because that doesn't really come into the conversation and it does take up an awful lot of screen real estate. But I do have a bunch of other peripherals I've made as well. Here's the sound device. The channels are on PCB now. I've still got to convert this main control circuit into a PCB, but that should come quite soon. Got this fun little circuit, which interfaces a SNES controller. Obviously, the VGA is a, its own video series, as is the UART. Let's fire it up. OK, so what you're seeing here is the console output from the serial port, which I'm accessing via a terminal emulator on my PC. But this is the monitor loader, which lets me fire some commands at the system. Now, obviously, I've got a whole load of commands here that are associated with devices that aren't currently attached. But I can look around through memory and do various basic read and write operations. I've even got a disassembler here. The main thing to note is I've got quite simple controls over these peripheral circuits, which themselves are quite complex. The UART circuit, for example, contains all the circuitry necessary to decode the UART signal and generate it. And the CPU is doing very little apart from monitoring to make sure the FIFO buffers aren't full or if there's data it needs to do something about. Now GPIO is a very different end of the spectrum. And most people have come across circuits like this Arduino before. And among other connections, it's got a whole bunch of GPIO lines that we can use for digital input and output. And what I'd like to do today is add some very basic input and output digital lines to this build, just so in the future we can do some peripheral control that's done in software with very limited additional circuitry. Now there's a large overlap between the circuit that we're going to build and just components of the circuits that we've built before. So hopefully we'll be able to move through this quite quickly. But let's take a look at that. I do like starting on a fresh new breadboard. Let's bridge the power and ground lines. Now I want 8 bits input and 8 bits output and that's going to come indirectly via the main bus which we'll need uh, one of these ribbon cables for but we'll get our control signals from one of the device control lines, which is these four pin cables. So conveniently with those come the power and ground. So the next two lines are load and assert. So let's deal with load first. If that signal goes low, then we've got data on the main bus, which we want to pull off it and output from our eight new IO lines. So I'm going to use one of these 574D types to hold the data when the load line triggers. We've got power and ground. And over here is an active low output enable line. And we want to pull that down because we're going to be outputting our data all the time. Now, obviously, we could use our outputs for anything, but I'm going to put an LED bar graph array here. That doesn't actually stop us connecting anything else to it. But if we wire this into all of the outputs, we'll be able to see what they are nice and readily. So I just need to cross connect these outputs. And now the final input is the copy line here on the D type. And we want to drive that from the load line. Right, we're going to imagine that the main bus is connected down there and this circuit should give us the output functionality, but we want the input as well. So for input, we want to imagine we've got eight data lines that we want to push onto the bus when the assert line goes low. So the first thought on that would be to use one of these 541 line driver chips. And to be honest, that would kind of work. 
We've got eight data lines here. We've got two output enable lines. We could hardwire one and then use one on the assert line and that will push the data over. But we have discussed before how this is kind of non-ideal because if the data line inputs change whilst that load operation is happening, we will be changing the signal that we push onto the main bus. Now we can kind of dig into the circuit of the CPU and realize that's probably going to work, but obviously there's all kind of complexities there where we're doing something that we don't really intend. So what I would rather do is sample the inputs and then push them consistently onto the bus. And so for that, we'll use a D-type. It's also two of the same chip, makes for a, a simpler circuit design. Now we want the power and ground you'd expect. Now we can imagine the bus to be on these top lines. We've got the copy line we need to deal with later, but we've got the output enable. And let's start off by thinking, well, we're gonna connect that directly to the assert line, but now we need to worry about the copy line. These D-types copy the data on their inputs to the outputs whenever the copy line goes from low to high. Now, when we're starting an assert operation, it's gonna go from high to low. So what we're going to do is feed that through an inverter. So that's gonna need power and ground as well. Now we want this assert line to go to one of the inverter inputs. We've got six of them here. And then I'm going to drive that output enable line by connecting it on from there just to make the wiring simple. So then the inverted output we can take up to our copy. Right now we've got main bus lines here and main bus lines here and we should probably cross connect those to make the connectivity back to the main system easier. Okay I'm going to stick these lines down here, it doesn't matter which side we put it on. Okay, one last thing is we've got eight inputs and we might not be using them all at the same time. So I'm going to use a resistor array to pull them all low actually, because we've got that ground line right there convenient. So all of those inputs should be low unless we uh, explicitly have a signal on there that's going to pull it high. So we're done. Um, I would like to see if we can test this a little bit before we move on. So here's the bus tester PCB. Gee, let's use a shorter wire for this. I'm going to replace that with some other shorter wires. So that's power, ground, and then we've got load and assert. Right now we've got some dip switches here we can use for inputs. Let's grab those. Now this button will push those onto the bus and that should be enough to test this. Right, so push the switches onto the bus and now I can set a combination of switches, see the outputs change and load line. And now we've pulled that value in and stored it in the D-type latch and we're outputting it on the LEDs. That's fantastic. So if I'm not asserting the switches, I've got all zeros here, so I could load that and this register has got all ones in it. And I've actually got a cert line for that there. So we can use that as a quick test as well. So load the ones, zeros, or the contents of these switches. So now we want to test the inputs. Now, if I push the assert line, we're gonna see zeros there because we're pulling all of these inputs down. So let's just grab a wire and pull the top bit upwards. And there we go, top bit is up. Next bit, now if I change this, let's go to the bottom bit. That doesn't change because of our latching effect. If I release the load line and then load it again, I get the correct value in. Right, as far as I can see, everything about this is working exactly the way we'd want. So. I think the obvious thing to do is pull the main circuit out and give it a test. Now we will need to connect it up to one of these bus breakouts. I'm going to use device 14, I think, but I've got one connecting the UART up on the left-hand side of a CPU and the other one with more complex connections on it go, is currently stored off with the VJ build. So I'm gonna quickly make up another one of these. Okay, so I've got one of the spare PCBs. I've got the main bus connection connectors, 
and I've got a bunch of these DuPont female connectors. Now I've only picked out the ones I need for the IO lines. I'm going to ignore the memory for here because I really don't need more than uh, two of these with the memory on. Right, I've got a second PCB here. I'm going to use that to try and help position these. Right, so we should be able to just plug into the bus now with a couple of these DuPont cables. All right, so here is our new GPIO board. We've got the new bus breakout. And bus connected. Now we need to pick a device line for it and we need to look at some code that's going to drive it. Right, so we need to interface this device. I've got a log here of where my devices are connected up and I don't have a spare device line, but the LCD, I think that's in the bottom of a drawer somewhere. We haven't used it for ages. So I'm going to get rid of that. And we're gonna say this one is GPIO. gone and load 14 is GPIO. Done the assert 14 is GPIO. I need to assemble something for that to update. Right, so that's our input and our output for the GPIO. Can replace the LCD ones there. Okay, and now the control build programs let us know that pipeline 2A has changed. So we just need to rewrite that one. Okay, so we need some test code, but rather than just write a bit of uh, standalone test code, I want to add some commands to the monitor. So I just want a simple command Simple read and write commands. Um, let's not forget to add the help documentation. The GPIO write's going to take a parameter. Okay, so that puts the help text in. That defines the name of the command. We need entries up here in the command processing block. Pointer to our read command text. And then that's going to be a function we need to implement that does it. And that one takes a parameter. Okay, that felt fairly painless. It's gonna complain that the functions don't exist. And that should compile now. Read should be very straightforward. So the A register should have what we want. Is that right? Yep. Okay, so that should output the number onto the screen in hex. 
new line after it and let's put a header block up there I think that's read completely implemented now write is going to be even easier I think now di points at the parameters that will be the numerical parameter be a miracle if I've got this right first time but it compiles can need that as well okay so let's go back and fire it up right so we put that into device 14 so that's the old version of the monitor but we can load a new one via the old monitor it's a nice little bit of bootstrapping. Okay, so there's our new commands in the help. So that should set the top bit. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, compared to other things we've done, this is very simple, but it's still joyous to see that work. Let's try the bottom bit. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so now we need the input. So yeah, so we've got that bottom bit set when we were testing it before and it's come back with the one. So let's change that to the top bit. Okay, the circuit and the code work first time. That's actually uh, quite fun. Okay, um, I kind of feel like we should do more than this and write some test code, but we're close to done for this circuit. Let's go and write a, a simple test function. Okay, so we kind of have something that's the feel of a very basic Arduino kind of starter circuit here. So let's do something along the lines of a kind of a first Arduino programmer with both input and output. So that will read the value in. We're just going to test to see if it's zero. So so I'm setting B to 15, 0 F, and then I'm setting B to F0 if the incoming GPIO values are not 0. Um, now we can only out from A, so let's do that. and then just repeat that in a tight loop. That's a 23 byte program. Look at this in the uh, upload format. It's nothing. Let's bring that program in. Right, so the input is non-zero. So we're showing the top four bits and bottom four bits. Right, I've got a physical button here. So I'm just going to wire that in. Fantastic. Right, so now we've got a circuit which we push the button and the LEDs change state. So this is ridiculous overkill to achieve that end. But of course, people build circuits like this with like an Arduino or have a basic microcontrollers as their first little test demo. And to the same degree, it's ridiculous overkill. They've got a powerful computing device and they're just performing logic that could be done with a couple of basic chips. But of course, this isn't why we've done this. We've done this because we can use these GPIO lines now to do some programmatic access for some more complicated devices. And that's what the next few videos in this series is going to be about. Okay, that's absolutely fantastic. I haven't had a circuit work first time for quite a while, but obviously everything else has been getting extremely complex. And here we're really going back to basics. The intention of course is to build in a very different direction. I'm gonna be taking some off the shelf devices and interfacing those into the build using the GPIO lines. And we're gonna add some interesting functionality over the next few videos. 
As always, thanks a lot to my patrons. I really do appreciate your support. This video, I think, is going to edit down to be an awful lot shorter than some of the recent ones, but uh, they have been getting a little bit out of control of late. But I hope you found it interesting. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.